for the Bondi Blue Show. I know I'm a little late, you guys. I'm so sorry. Last week was my birthday, which is the normal day that I put out the video, and my schedule was all wonky. And so here we are today on Wednesday. And I feel like I can give y'all a better video today because I feel like more things have kind of happened, okay? I had to change in some of the topics, you know, update the topics. But guess what? We good and we here. And I'm glad to get right into it. So, y'all, let's get into my ish talking. Now, girl. <laughs> I don't know what Laura Govan thought was going to happen when she took her ass on Iyanla Fix My Motherfucking Life. But Iyanla tried, but there's nothing you can do for people like, like Laura Govan, if you ask me, okay? Now, let me tell y'all, I watched it, okay? And I also follow Laura on Instagram and shit because I, I love that, you know, she works out and she's always really cute and all of this shit. So I watched the episode knowing exactly what we were going to delve into. Her relationship with Gilbert Arenas, how she believes that Gilbert Arenas fucked her sister. But we find out the timeline. Apparently, she believed that her sister, Gloria, you know, they were all on Basketball Wives at one point, had a relationship with Gilbert Arenas before she even started having children with him, okay? She had now has four children with Gilbert Arenas, okay? The episode also focused in on her relationship with her parents and how her father, who is stern and raised them to be um, more aggressive than he should have been. The whole thing with Gilbert Arenas is fight, 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 fight. He wants to fight, so I'm going to fight him back, even though he has long money and you don't. Okay, all the money that you have is mostly based upon, upon what he gives you for child support. And Iyana tells her, she's like, first of all, okay, you need to deal with your daddy issues, bitch. First of all, okay, daddy needs to show a little bit more emotion, a little bit more love. Okay, fine. Daddy's 74 years old. He's been in this world a long time. We can't do that much magic with him. But you young, okay? You young enough to see how your bad decisions and your negativity have led to where you are now, which is being a fucking joke. When women are in situations like this, it's because they feel like if they give up the children, they give up power, they give up the right to say, oh, you owe me this money because now you've given the children back to the father. The main thing that she should have come away from Iyanla with is when Iyanla told her, let him have the children because he doesn't want the children. Let him have them. That doesn't mean give up custody. That means pack your kids' bags up, Put them in the car, drive over to Gilbert Arena's house, drop the kids off, get in your car, and go the fuck home and watch what happens. When he has to take responsibility for all four of those kids, I'm sure his attitude will change. But if you never give him the opportunity to do that, you will never find out. All you want to do is fight. Fight, 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 fight. What we really got from the whole episode was that Laura was molested at a very young age by someone. Y'all know they always bleep the name out. And she told her, her parents when she was like 13 years old. And it supposedly happened when she was like 8. They didn't believe her. And now as a grown adult, they say that she never told them about it. Come on, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Then another thing is that they don't believe her about Gloria possibly fucking uh, um, Gilbert Arenas at some point. Why wouldn't you believe that? Gloria fucks everybody from what we heard. <laughs> Tiger Woods, okay? <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, I always go to that for Tiger Woods. <laughs> okay, Tiger Woods got a DUI this week, okay? Um, I believe it was Tuesday morning he got the DUI. Did a breathalyzer, did not have any alcohol in his system. What basically happened was that he was on way too many pain meds, was driving from playing golf, pulled over to the side of the road with the car still running with the blinker blinking and fell the fuck asleep at the wheel and the cops got him out the car tried to do the field sobriety test he failed it he wouldn't take a breathalyzer until later on when he got back to the police station and by that time you know whatever his system might have been gone but I don't think it was alcohol I really do think that Tiger has suffered a lot of, of physical ailments playing golf and has had many surgeries. They said he's had surgeries on his knees, on his back, on his Achilles heel. He's had a whole bunch of shit going on with his body. And regardless of whether you want to believe it or not, I'm sure that if you do it enough, golf is a very uh, tenuous sport on certain areas of your body. Okay? So, I do believe... 
believe that Tyler was was not drunk, okay? I do believe that he probably was mixing them drugs a little bit too hard. I mean, life doesn't seem all that great for him, okay? You gotta pay your wife all that fucking alimony because you was cheating on her. Your career has completely gone downhill, okay? And see, right now is when you would have needed us <laughs> to come and back you up. But you kind of shitted on us. Like, I'm sorry, is it just my perception in Tiger Woods? Like, besides the love of his father, kind of never really wanted to be considered african-american never really wanted to be considered black i think it's so funny how this happens to a lot of um celebrities but more so in sports how they get their rise and like they in a way try to separate themselves from the community and when they're on their way down white people separate themselves from you without <laughs> you even notice they back the fuck up like you got the plague okay and now you know you're looking for somebody to have you back and um we shades to the bullshit terrible terrible picture terrible picture thanks though the bam okay y'all the bam and scrappy okay on love and hip-hop which did not come on this past week we know that they are broken up that they are moving their separate ways and this past week the bam posted a picture of her mom helping her move things um out of the home, I'm guessing, into a U-Haul. Talking about how she ain't gonna never depend on a nigga to help her for nothing. And she ain't gonna never... Girl, look, I ain't even about to go through everything that she said. The only reason I'm talking about it is because I feel like, why the fuck are you posting this on social media? Why are you still, like, going through the motions of this? Y'all are broke up. Y'all not together. Get your shit out that house. Move back to L.A. Get your life together. Why the fuck is this something that's persisting when he obviously has moved on? I do feel bad for the BAM because I feel like she really had the best intentions, but I think that when she's always pointing a finger at him she sometimes needs to point it back to herself because how mature are you for you to be posting that shit about what he ain't do for you and it was all subliminal she ain't really say his name but it was like you complaining about all the things that he never did and how you don't never have to depend on a man get your ass the fuck out his house quietly go get your own shit and the next picture you put up need to be you in your new place okay i'm just saying like why you gonna complain about the life on the show y'all break up and then you Still complaining about it. Get the fuck out the situation, bam. God damn. You posting that shit. Meanwhile, Scrappy is in Miami partying up with everybody's favorite go-to after I done broke up with my old lady, Bobby Valentino, and Nicki Minaj. So who's actually winning? It still looks like Scrap. And I, and I feel like that's unfair, bam. But that's what I'm saying, bitch. You showing that something is wrong with you, dude. When he's over there living my life and you, my mama helping me move out this motherfucking life. Bitch, come on now. Come on, move on, bitch. Move on. Move on like mine. T.I. and Tiny have finally finished the family hustle. The show is OV. It's over. And as far as they're saying, so is the relationship. Okay? Now. I don't want to pry in nobody's relationship because I don't want nobody prying in mine. But from the outside looking in, T.I. has completely and utterly pissed me the fuck off. He actually is about to have a comedy series uh, that's part music, part comedy with Kevin Hart. They're about to come together and do that. And the whole time I'm like, Kevin Hart, why are you putting yourself in business with this nigga right now? <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, but his whole explanation and how he don't give a fuck about how he treated his wife, all because she went and partied with Floyd Mayweather, flirted with him after you have fucked many a chick, <laughs> fucked many a chick. Okay, not only that, but somebody that she actually hired. The whole thing that came out was that she had an assistant that she hired to help them and he was fucking the assistant. He didn't see anything wrong with him fucking the assistant. His problem was that you partying and hanging with somebody who you know I don't like. And that's the type of fucking mentality that works on my nerves about T.I. You so fucking intelligent and, and smart, but you don't realize how much, how much of an asshole you sound, okay? Telling your wife that being with her is an inconvenience to you being a hustler, to you getting this money. It's a distraction to all the pussy you could be getting if only you didn't have to worry about your wife. Tiny dimmed her light so T.I. could shine. And in relationships, sometimes you go through phases where you do that. But throughout their relationship, he is always, you better not do that. You can't work. You can't do this. You got to be at home with the kids and all of that shit. Just for you to turn around and tell me that I'm a distraction <laughs> while you fucking my assistant. Okay? I'm sorry, 
right? But that's the most disrespectful bullshit I have ever fucking seen. And for you to get on social media, on interviews, on television, and tell people that shit, I wanted somebody to knock you upside your motherfucking head. And I also wanted to remind you that it don't matter how good your hands is, playboy, you are never gonna beat old slow ass Mayweather's ass. And I meant slow up here, not slow right here. He always impressed me. Always impressed me. And the fact that he was with Tiny and, and so it seemed in love with her, that raised his fuckability to me. And now to find out that you were just old disrespectful, dusty dick, put it in any old bitch ass nigga like everybody else that want to be out here fucking everybody that's throwing their panties onto the stage. My nigga, you have disappointed me to a negative, okay? You have disappointed me to a negative. The only good thing about this is to see the glow up for Tiny. She's able to now do escape. They're coming to Essence down here in New Orleans in July. But you know what, Tiny? You go ahead and move on like Maya, girl. That's the, that's the thing. Move on like Maya. Adrian Ballard. Y'all, I have never been a real fan of Adrian Ballard, but you know what? I'm not a hater, so I'll never, you know, knock nobody shine. Y'all know she's on the real. She used to be a member of 3LW. Now, in my last Bondi Blue show, we talked about Monique and her comments about, you know, sucking up the diggage uh, to Lee Daniels, Oprah Winfrey, and Tyler Perry. Since then, Tyler Perry has reached out to Monique and she spoke on that as well. I don't know why Adrian Ballard felt the need to basically say that she should have been more classy. There should have been a classier way. I mean, why do you have to say things like that? And it's like, bitch, she's a comedian? And it was at her fucking comedy show. So if she thought it was going to bust a couple of guts to tell Tyler Perry, Oprah Winfrey, and fucking Lee Daniels to suck her dick, that's her prerogative. And where the fuck does class come in, bitch? Class, what are you talking about? The lady that's got an Academy Award and you could barely get a motherfucking Emmy for that show you're doing right now? I'm just saying, y'all, Adrian Bellard pissed me off with that because it's like you're trying to act like you're so much better than somebody else because they real enough to speak on their truth if that's her truth that's her truth every truth is not most truth ain't pretty ain't classy ain't neat and nice for you motherfuckers that's why y'all don't like people that tell the truth all the time that's why a lot of people don't like me it's not cute and classy and that's not no bitch fuck you i'm not trying to be cute i'm not trying to be classy i'm trying to be motherfucking real right now okay and i'm trying to get a, a hee-haw out some fucking body <laughs> okay a, a laugh a chuckle out somebody that's what monique was trying to do when she was up there on that stage telling her truth and motherfuckers is paying to see her so she can say whatever she want to say okay adrian ballard bitch that brings me to the next part of this you the same woman that just took responsibility for all your color shaming and bullying that you did to Notori Norton who is shitting on your career right now. Your claim to fame besides this show is fucking a Kardashian bitch. And the only reason it has not ruined your career is because you're not a black man. <laughs> okay? That's the only reason it hasn't ruined your career is because you're not a black man bitch. Okay? And it just works on my fucking nerves when people always want to throw their little shade about how much better they are because I'm classy and that wasn't classy. Bitch, shut the fuck up. Tori Norton come on the show and she wanted, I just really want to apologize for how, you know, I treated you and everything that happened when we were in the group. And Tori was like, you know, thank you and very gracious, like, you know, like a beautiful bitch should do. She pregnant, she on her grind, she shining, she ain't got time for this bullshit. I wonder if she gonna be pregnant on power. And in other news, Underground and The Get Down were both canceled. Um, the Get Down was canceled from Netflix and they said because it cost too much to make even though we just found out that Netflix is worth 70 billion dollars. I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, whatever. Um, and then Underground which is on WGN just got bought okay by another company and that company wants to go in another more white more fox newsy direction <laughs> okay and that's fine that's fine but wgn you missed out somebody else will pick underground up i heard it's a great show um i watched like the first couple of episodes i think the first two episodes but let me tell y'all something i didn't get into it and i didn't really watch it not because i didn't want to support it because i recorded it but because I have a thing. I've watched many a slave, many a Jim Crow, and then, you know, working in the news myself, I am bombarded with racial shit all the time. 
And the last thing I want is to watch it in my entertainment. I'm sorry. I respect the show. I respect what it did. I think it should be out there for the people that want to enjoy it. And I probably would have eventually watched it. And I probably still will because I think it's on Hulu. But it just wasn't something I was ever in the mindset to watch. It's like I have to get in the mindset to watch Roots or some shit. I'm not ready to go back to slavery because you motherfuckers still try to act like we have no right to still feel any type of way about that shit. Even though the remnants of it are very much alive today. <laughs> like it's just, it's ridiculous. I'm mad about the get down primarily because I felt like something else was supposed to happen after that some more clarification on you know where we were supposed to go with the story and i feel like they just left us hanging and that's kind of why i felt how i felt about the get down that's why we have to watch our shows y'all we have to watch shows that have black people on them so that they don't just disappear okay like for instance the carmichael show comes on tonight premieres for its third season i love the carmichael show it is fucking hilarious you guys should definitely watch it i believe it's on nbc you should check your local listings but i believe it's nbc either way y'all check out the carmichael show that comes on tonight on wednesday evening and i'll put the information somewhere on the screen so you guys can make sure you check that out so i get a lot of questions on what to do where to go in new orleans when you come down here for essence fest okay so on a date <laughs> on my day off uh, i think it was what week before last me and my husband decided to go to cafe dumont it is very touristy but it still is the best place to get coffee and to get some beignets okay so here's a little video of our trip i hope you guys enjoy coming to essence fest it is hot as fuck in new orleans in july <laughs> being straight up honest with you so few things you might need sunscreen sunglasses hats umbrellas to protect you from the sun's rays when you are out and about okay also if you can get like those water bottles that spray and have fans on them ideal okay flat walking shoes hella cobblestones okay that's not the business when you you know you're trying to be cute and have your little summer heels on bitch no don't hurt yourself between the heat <laughs> don't hurt yourself okay between the heat the traffic, the amount of people that's going to be in town, the busyness of the city, I would advise you to get as loose and comfortable as possible while all still looking cute, bitch. It's time for my motherfucking advice. It's time for my motherfucking advice. 
right, y'all. This is a long and methin advice. So get in tidy because I'm about to read it to y'all so y'all can be fully informed. Okay. Come this week, my boyfriend's and I will have been together for two years, but we've been dating on and off for the past 11 and a half, 12 years. Mind you, our good days outweigh our bad days. And I don't know what to do because he jumps on me and I never would have thought he would put his hands on me. It hasn't gotten to the point of him hitting my face, but he throws things at me. I get bruises on my body and he pulls my hair. He chokes me to the point of me urinating on myself. Bitch, I don't know how good you could possibly think anything is when that happens. Um, But we're going to get into it. Hold up. Let me continue to read. He got upset that I posted a picture on Facebook with the caption, I bet he won't like this pic. He came home and went off throwing things, knocking pictures off the wall, and breaking cell phones. It was an experiment to see if he would like my picture because he has a female friend who's posting pictures he always likes. He knows I'm jealous and I don't like the fact that he likes any female status or pictures. Bitch, you're being petty. Stop it. So, just two days before he punched a hole in the wall because he said I laughed and snickered because he missed a step coming down the stairs. Like, nigga, if I can't laugh at you, who could? To be honest, I didn't because I was on the phone with my best friend. I asked him, was he okay? And he said, yeah, and punched the wall saying that it was the closest thing to him. The very first fight we got into was because I said he was abusive at the time. He was very disrespectful, and that is abuse in my mind i was terrified for my life he had gotten the kitchen broom and started hitting the seat cushion that was next to me and was calling me his ex-girlfriend name the fuck this nigga need to be on medication saying both of us act just alike two stupid bitches that thinks he is a fucking game he constantly brings up the fact that i told him that i slept with three guys while i was in the military overseas he says that I was being a whore and that he was stupid for waiting on me. But coincidentally, he started dating someone. And when I came back to America, he started cheating on her with me. She had a baby by another guy during a break that they had. She got pregnant and lost her baby um, at 22 months. She says that he was the only father figure in his life because me and the baby daddy broke up before I found out I was pregnant. He is the first relationship I've been in since since my pregnancy I tell him when we fight to leave me because I'm afraid I'm not afraid of being single nor dying because hopefully I can be united with my son I have no one to go to I don't want to talk to my family because I don't want him to to shoot my family I'm guessing you mean I told my best friend and she says that I'm not done with him and will leave when I'm fed up I'm honestly afraid to leave because I don't know what he will do he says that if we break up he will feel played because of the time and money he invested in me. If there's any young woman out there that's going to this, I want you to turn this shit up and fucking listen to me, okay? Please listen to me. Any abuse is abuse, okay? If he's choking you till you pee on yourself, that's fucking abuse. If he's choking you, period, that's abuse. If he's throwing things at you, if you feel scared, if you feel nervous around him, it's abuse and just because he was there for you when you got pregnant does not mean that you owe him anything because he spent money or did anything during your relationship that's what a relationship is sweetheart that's what it is you don't owe him anything and another thing to me it sounds like both of y'all are a little too fucking jealous okay you mad because he like it post he mad because you like him post so now that mean you didn't fucked everybody let me tell you something, baby. Unless you get out that relationship, you're going to be miserable, okay? I'm not like your friend. I'm not going to... Even though I feel like your friend is right, you're not tired yet. So, you you know, you're not really going to leave until you're really tired. But I want to impress upon you not to wait until you're too fucking tired. Because too, too tired can mean dead. Too tired can mean dead, okay? I want you to understand the mindset of this relationship. It's not healthy. And I'm so very happy that you didn't have a baby for him because then you'd have a baby for somebody and you'd be in an abusive relationship and bringing another life into that fucked up situation. Why would you put yourself through that? I can tell by you writing me that you know you're not being treated well, okay? Somebody that thinks it's okay to call you a whore, call you out your name because you've done what you've done like he hasn't done what he's done, that's that fucked up mentality. That's that T.I. mentality, okay? That what I do is okay, but what you do is so fucked up. Even though you say he's never hit you in your face and all of this type of shit, I can hear you making excuses for him, but at the same time, you're telling me that you're deathly afraid of him. 
You need to call the police. I know a lot of women don't want to do that. Oh, I don't want to get the police involved. Fuck that. Fuck that. If you're not protecting me enough as your woman to not put your hands on me, to not choke me, to not abuse me, why the fuck should I be protecting you from the cops? You need to be your number one priority, baby. Not him. Not his feelings. And not what the fuck he's going to do. You need to be strong enough to walk the fuck away. And if you need to pray on that strength, if you need to, to you know, listen to me tell you, whatever you need to do, but I'm going to need for you to put your motherfucking shoes on. Put everything you need in a bag. And when he ain't there, leave. All my love, all my strength that I can give to you, please find a way to walk away Get the fuck out of it. Don't wait until you're fed up. I don't care if the dick is amazing. There's other amazing dick. I promise. I promise. Okay? <laughs> okay? See? Prime example. Other amazing dick. Not mine. <laughs> but still, okay? He was other when I was with somebody that was undeserving. And right now, you sound like you with somebody that's undeserving, that does not have the tools to be in a relationship because it sounds very high school, the things that y'all argue and fight about. It's very high school. It's nothing really serious. Calling you, all that calling you a whore and shit, that's niggas in their own head with their own shit. You can't fix that. You can't, okay? From what you gave me, I'm giving you what I got. Walk the fuck away. Tell y'all. me for MF and advice so that your letter could be on the show. I appreciate you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And Care Bear, share, shake them tits, shake them tits, shake them tits. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Thank you again. Bye.